Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome to the 14th C++ in game tutorial. Today we're going to be going over something incredibly useful in game design and in programming in general called classes and objects. And if you've ever heard the term object-oriented programming, uh, that's because it gets its name from the objects that we're about to learn about. So what a class is, is it's something that sort of encapsulates a bunch of functions or variables together uh, that serve kind of one purpose. So for instance, if we wanted to have a monster that does certain things like attacks the player and walks around and things like that. We don't want to have in our main.cpp a bunch of just random functions everywhere that do that and a bunch of random variables that define that, um, that monster. Instead, what we want to do is have it all encapsulated or all contained in this one uh, little thing called a class. And it just makes it so much easier to manage everything. And it's conceptually, it makes a lot of sense because when you think of a monster, you don't think of a collection of variables. You think of a thing, a physical monster, and that's kind of how we use objects to represent things. So first, uh, let's go ahead and create our class. Now the difference between a class and an object is that a class is basically just a description of an object. For instance, it's like writing down all the properties and the, the functionality of a monster, whereas an object is the actual monster. So first we're going to create the class, which is like I said, just the description. So to make a class, we type C-L-A-S-S -S for class, and then we type the name. I'm going to call mine Monster. And it's a good idea to name your classes with a capital first letter. Uh, that's just good programming practice. And then we type a curly brace and then an end curly brace. And then you do need a semicolon at the end of uh, the class. So in here, we type whatever functions we want our class to do or whatever variables we want our class to have. So let's make it so that our monster can growl. We're going to make a void function void growl. And then we can go ahead and define it right here. So I'm going to put curly braces and I'm going to say C out growl. Now this is a really simple function. Later when we learn graphics, we could make it play an animation or do something crazy, make it move around. But this is fine just for now. So now here is our class. It's a monster. All it does is growl. Let's go ahead and make a monster that growls. Now this is just the description. It's not an actual monster. We have to create an instance of this class, which means we have to make an object. And to do that, we basically just make a variable that has the type object. Just like when we make a string, a string is a class. For instance, string s, that's a class. Uh, int is not a class, it's a variable, but it's defined the same way. So the monster, we just say, for a monster, we just say monster, and then we name it. So we're going to say monster1, like that. And bam, we have a class. So now, on the next line, if we want, we can call the growl function. Let's try to make our monster growl. So we're going to say, monster1, I want you to growl. And just like when we're accessing like string.length or something, we just say monster.growl. Anytime you want to access something that's inside the class monster, you just say dot and then whatever it is. So this growl function is what's going to come after the dot in this case. Now immediately we get an error. Our monster object is throwing us an error. And if we mouse over it and zoom in, you'll see the error is monster growl is inaccessible. Now what that means is we haven't made our growl function public. Now by default, everything in a class is called something, it, it's something called private, which means you can't access it outside of the class. If we had another function in here, it could call growl. Or if we had variables in here that were private, growl could use those variables. But if we are outside of the class, for instance, right here, we're telling the class or we're telling our object to do something, we're telling it to growl. If it's private, that means it's not going to let us do that. And the reason we have public and private is for really, really big code bases. Sometimes you want specific code in a monster that can't be accessed outside. For instance, what if we have the monster's name or something, and we don't want you to just be able to change his name just anywhere. We want you to only set his name in the very beginning. So what we can do is make it so that whenever we make our first monster variable, it sets the name to something. And then if our, main, our name variable is private, that means nobody else anywhere in our code can ever change it. So if you've got like 30 programmers making this game and it's like 30,000 lines of code, nobody else can go monster.name equals Fred just randomly because that would break your code. That wouldn't be good. That's what public and private are for. They're just, they, they're just there to make programming easier and make it easier to kind of make sense of your classes. So if we want this to be public, we want our function to be able to actually work uh, when we call it here, we type public. By default, it's private, but we're changing it to public when we type this. 
Now you type public and then a colon, not a semicolon. Now you'll notice I have it backed up all the way to the left. That's one programming style. It's the one I like. You can also tab it to the right and then tab these to the right. That's another way to do it. I prefer this way. You can do it however you want. So now the error goes away and we can call monster1.growl. So let's go ahead and hit play. And look, we get growl and I forgot to put a new line. But there it is. It works. So let's put our new line there for sure. Okay. And then how do I unzoom? That's how I unzoom. That's not where the new line goes. So that's our growl function. What if we want to make a variable? Let's make a string variable called name. Okay, so this is the name of our monster. Now remember I said we don't want them to be able to say monster1.name equals. We pretty much never want to have public variables. You can, like there's some cases where you can, but you're never going to go wrong if you only have private variables. And I really recommend that you make all your variables private whenever you can. So we don't want to be able to call dot name. So what we're going to do is go over on this next line and type private. So now everything that comes after this private is a private variable. And a really good programming practice that you should be doing to become a good software engineer is anytime you have a private variable, you take in front of the name, in front of whatever the name of your variable is, you type an underscore like that. This means this is a private variable. This is just a really good programming practice, and it'll come in handy later when you're looking through really big functions. It helps you determine what's a private variable and what's not. So now this isn't going to work. Even if we type dot underscore name here equals, that's not going to work because it's a private variable. We can't access it. So how do we change the name? What if we want to set the name to something? Well, what we can do is make a function that actually sets the name. So we type void set name, and then we can type string name here. Now the reason it'll work if we do this is because remember I said the monster class himself can access the name from inside. So what we're going to do is pass a name in to a function and then he's going to change his own name. So we're basically, instead of changing his name for him, we're telling him to change his own name. And this is a much safer way to do it. I, it's, in this example, it's identical to just changing a public variable, but in the future, these setters and getters, oh yeah, this is called a setter function, by the way, or I think it's also called a mutator function, but I don't like that word, just say setter. So this is a setter function, it sets a variable. A getter function gets a variable, we can, we'll code that up too. But anyways, we're telling him to change his own name. Now, in the future, these setters might do extra stuff in them, so that's why it's a good idea to just make these from the get-go. And they're going to be really fast. You don't have to worry about it slowing down your program or anything like that. So now we can say monster1, right here, let's say monster one dot set name, And then in here, we'll tell him what his name is. I'm going to say, your name is George. Okay, so now our monster has the name George. So what that's going to do is it's going to call this set name function with George as a parameter, and then it's going to set the local variable name equal to George, or the private variable name equal to George. Now, if we want to print out his name to the screen, we could do C out, and then we can't say, remember, we can't say monster.name because it's private. So we're going to make a getter function. So here's a setter. <clears throat> And here's a getter function. So we type the type of a variable we're getting, which is a string. So we're going to type string get name. And then we have no parameters because it's just returning something. And it's just going to be return name. So that's going to return the string variable to us. So now we can type monster1, monster1 dot get name and we can access it because it's a public function it's fine to have public functions but only have a public function if you need it outside of the class so there we go this should print it out let's go ahead and try it my throat is getting dry so i'm about to definitely end this episode oh and we got an error uh it says uh it doesn't know what this operator is what it, or it doesn't know how to match it with the string variable and that's because we forgot to include string so remember if you're ever working with strings Always include string. I get that error all the time. And then hit run. And here we go. We get growl here. And then we got his name. That's George. So this is how you're going to encapsulate all of your objects and things. In the next episode, we're going to learn how to move this out of the main function and into a new, I mean, so, sorry, out of the main file and into its own file so that our program is even easier to read. Thanks for joining me, guys.